In this video, we're going to look at some fundamental variable operations in Java. We're going to look at declaring, initializing, and assigning a variable. I'm also going to point out a few gotchas that tend to trap people when they're early programming and, and make some just simple mistakes. I want to tell you what those are so that you can be sure to avoid them. So first of all, why variables? We require variables quite a bit in programming because it's a place to store our work. Maybe we're gathering some data from the user. Maybe we're submitting some data from a phone to a server, a server in the cloud. Maybe we're doing some kind of computation or some kind of driving directions. All of these require temporary variables, or in other words, something that is just used for kind of an in-flight calculation and won't actually be persisted to permanent storage. They could eventually be persisted, don't get me wrong, and most things are going to be in a temporary variable before they're persisted, but we're not worried about persistence right now. Our concern at the moment is temporary memory, or RAM, random access memory, the memory which essentially cleans itself out each time the computer stops. Now, don't worry though, the data types we talk about are going to be important when we talk about persistence as well, but that's a future topic. So, scope is important, and if you're new to programming, scope might be kind of um, something that's not very clear. But scope is defined by the curly braces. Uh, on an American keyboard, you see these to the right of the P key. And these curly braces indicate a boundary, essentially a boundary of work that's going to be done. Now, they're curly braces. I kind of think it looks like the head of a toothbrush, which I think is a good analogy as well, because when I wake up in the morning, one of the first things I do is brush my teeth. When I go to bed at night, one of the last things I do is brush my teeth. So brushing my teeth is essentially of a boundary of everything that I'm going to fit into my day. It starts with brushing my teeth, it ends with brushing my teeth. And that's what these curlies mean. If I look at the program that we wrote earlier in NetBeans, we see that we have this thing called a class, and we might not know what a class is yet. But you see that its boundary is defined by the open and close curly. And then we also have a method, and again, we might not know what a method is yet, but not to, not to worry, we can see the boundary that is defined by the open and close curly. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, when I click on a close curly, it highlights the corresponding open curly in yellow, and vice versa it does the same when I click on an open curly. So we know scope is important because that tells us what type of variable we are declaring. An attribute. An attribute is a variable that is declared within the class, but not within a method. In other words, this is a method, this is the class. So an attribute could be defined pretty much anywhere where I've highlighted here. We wouldn't define it in the Java doc. So anywhere I've highlighted here, in theory, it could also be where I've highlighted down here. In practice, these attributes are typically defined at the very top of the class. Now I will say that we call them attributes, but there are other acceptable names like field or member variable. Depending on when you learn Java, we've used different words to describe this type of variable, but they're all the same. A parameter variable is a variable that's inside of a method signature, like the one that we see here, string args. Now here again, if we don't know what a method is yet, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But just remember this, a parameter variable is in between the parentheses that make up a method. When we talk more about methods, that will make a bit more sense. A local variable is a variable that is declared within a method, like so. So a local variable is declared anywhere within this open and close curly for a method. It could also be local to an if block or a for loop. We don't know what those are yet, so don't worry. But again, we'll get to those in, in a bit later. Now, careful here. The only place where we can declare any kind of variable is within the class itself. In other words, within the open curly, close curly that I've highlighted here in this snippet. We simply cannot declare variables above the class or after the class. That's a pitfall that I see many times for new programmers. Someone might say, oh, okay, well, int uh, age equals 40, like so. You see, it doesn't belong there because it's outside of the class. So when declaring a variable, make sure that you are declaring it inside of a class or inside of a method or even inside of a, a method signature, but it simply cannot be declared outside of a class. Note it will give us a red line. The right thing to do when we have a red line is to stop and fix our issue. Okay, 
Vocabulary. So different vocabulary applies to variables. Declaring a variable is something that we do only one time, and to declare a variable, we need a name and a type. Although actually those go in reverse order. It would be a type and then a name. One of the types that we can have is int, which is a whole number type. So you see int age, that is a variable declaration. I am declaring the variable age, and that's a name that I just made up, and I'm saying it is type int. Now we'll get into data types in a separate video, but data type simply says, okay, we have Brandon's binary calculator that we saw in a previous video. We know that we can use a set of zeros and ones to come up with some kind of number. Uh, like if I put, uh, let's see, if I put the one here, that'll make 150, 151, just like so. If I put a one in the eight, it will make 151, 159. And so the data type simply says, how do we interpret that 159? Is it a whole number or is it a key that takes us to a map of numbers to letters so we can figure out what letter corresponds to that number? That's what that data type means. Okay, so declaration means we have type and name. Okay, and we go back and we see that assignment means we're assigning a value to this variable. So I can say age equals 40 again, that's an assignment. So let me go ahead and say declare, and then we'll put a comment that says assign. Now, can I assign a value to a variable multiple times? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to do a system out print line, which says age, and then plus age. Now you might say, gosh, what's that? Well, we don't, we, we've seen this in a prior video, but system out print line just means print something to standard output. You see something funny here where I've taken something in quotes. That means just print what is inside of those quotes literally. Then I have a plus, and then I have my variable age. It doesn't mean we're adding things together. It means we are printing what's between the quotes, and then we're printing the value of this age variable. So let me go ahead and run this before I continue. So we'll go ahead and choose run. And let's see, we should get a, a message down here when we run that says age 40. And sure enough, that's coming from here, age, and then the value of 40, which is what we see here. Okay, so can I assign, the question was, can I assign a different value to that variable? Let's say age equals 42. Uh, yeah, I'm allowed to do that, no problem. A variable can be reassigned an infinite number of times in the life of that variable. So if I run, we'll see, now we'll have two similar lines, age 40 and age 42, both using the same variable. And I said that we can assign a different value to a variable over time as many times as we want. That's why it's called a variable, because the data inside of the variable varies. Or in other words, it can change. Okay, so assignment we can do as many times as we want. An assignment can even be a mathematical expression. We could say age equals age plus three. And if I run the program now, uh, remember, that's assignment, not equality. It's saying, take what's on the right, perform that calculation, assign it to the variable on the left. So if I run now, we see age 40, and then 40 plus 3 is 43. So age 40 and age 43. So assignment we can do multiple times, but be careful. We cannot declare more than once. A pitfall that I see frequently is that somebody will do something like declare the variable age and then continue to put the type before the variable each time that variable is used. You can't do that because the simple nature of having the type before the variable name means you're declaring that variable. Now what's the big deal? Declaring a variable means you are allocating space in memory for the data that you're storing in this variable. That space has to have a unique name. So if you try to declare the same variable over and over again with the same name, it's going to give you a red line and say, no can do, buddy. You can't keep declaring more spaces in memory with the same name. But if I don't have that data type in front, it means that I'm not trying to allocate a new place in memory. I'm trying to reuse the one I allocated up above when I had int age. Okay, we'll go ahead and save that. So no big changes there. I do want to consider initialization. Initialization is the very first time that you 
uh, that you assign a value to a variable. So I could say something like int, uh, let's say zip code, although that's a purely American concept because a lot of uh, European zip codes contain letters, so that should really be a string. But nonetheless, uh, int zip code, or they'd, it'd be a postcode over there, int zip code equals 45202. Okay, you see what I've done here is I've declared the variable zip code and I've assigned 45202 to that variable zip code. Because I've done the declaration and the initial assignment all in one step, this is also known as initialization or initializing that variable. And just like anything else, I can do a system out print line and say zip code. Zip is actually an acronym. Uh, and then we'll say zip code. Now zip code C, I could, I, I, I'm tempted to make that an uppercase C. I really feel like that should be an uppercase C. And by the way, note that uh, it is case sensitive. So if I have a lowercase C here, an uppercase C here, it tells me cannot find symbol. Cannot find symbol means I'm trying to access a variable that has never been declared before. And if you're looking at this, especially as a newer programmer, you might say, I don't understand. It's zip code here, it's zip code there. What's the difference? Well, Java is case sensitive, so we have to make sure that the case is exactly the same uh, when we declare the variable and when we wish to use uh, the variable. By the way, I said it is an acronym. Do you know what it stands for? Uh, zone Improvement Program. So zip code 45202. There we go. So that's declaring and initializing a variable. Also, we took a look at assigning a variable and using some mathematic computations for assigning a variable. Okay, declaring a variable, we know we need the type, and then we need a name. So the type can be any one of eight primitive types that we'll talk about in a separate video. Those are byte, short, int, long, double, float, uh, boolean, and car, C-H-A-R, car. We can also use a string, which is kind of a, a special type, one that represents multiple letters or numbers. And then we can also use a class. We may or may not know what a class is right now, so don't worry about that if you don't know what it is. Now for the name, the name has to be unique. And that's why I say you can only declare a variable with a given name one time. You cannot declare it more than one time with the same name. The name needs to be uh, made of letters and numbers, and the underscore, we typically use the underscore only in a special type of variable called a constant. Uh, usually the first character of a variable has to be a letter. Uh, so in Java, we will typically use lower camel case to name variables. So you see the first word all over case, no space, no underscore between the first word and the second word. The second word, uppercase the first letter. The third word, uppercase the first letter. All else is lowercase. So lower camel case is our standard in Java. Now, could you use a different case? Could I make it uppercase zip code like so? Uh, yes, as long as I'm consistent. But the thing is, you kind of look like the new guy when you do that. So it's one of those things where it would work if you used a whole bunch of crazy underscores and things like that. But your colleagues would say, what are you doing? <laughs> it, it's a bit more readable to just use lower camel case, which is the standard that we have for variables. So that's a look at variables. In our next video, we'll look at the different variable types. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.